Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and with this video we're going to be checking out all the brand new additions coming to Grand Cafe. Patch 4.2 is adding a fair number of single entity monsters, a legendary hero and a generic legendary hero to Grand Cafe, all currently from the new lore which we've not been able to see because the army book still isn't out yet. <laughs> but let's talk about everything as these are quite exciting. The first addition is that of a generic hero known as the Gates Master. So the Gates Master is a hybrid specialist with access to a crossbow with pretty good range and also with sword and board making it a fairly decent melee fighter. It's actually quite good and makes it very useful throughout your whole campaign. It's also able to buff up melee defense for troopers and has a harmony amplifier of 25%. Overall the hero is fairly good and it was quite needed for Grand Cafe especially since a bunch of lords do have options to boost up melee attack and melee defense but no hero to actually make use of that. The hero itself can be found directly if you decide to play as you on bow. You'll start with one and you'll be able to check all the skills out from the very beginning. It's honestly quite good at what it does. At the beginning you'll be able to get up a buff to buff up your troops. You'll also have three different options here. One of them which focuses on upkeep production of melee troopers, the other one which helps with sieges, and the other one which works with, um, you know, just general hero actions and so on. I am a big fan, again, being able to reduce the upkeep of Jade Troopers. This is for Jade Warriors, Jade Warrior Halberds, Jade Warrior Crossbows, so it's not just the melee ones. And Jade Lancers too, whilst also increasing their melee defense, is really, really good. Minus 10% upkeep is wonderful, especially as these are heroes that you can just keep stacking on relentlessly, so you can get some pretty cheap armies with the Jade Warriors. And those are troopers that you're going to be using fairly often, so I don't imagine that you'd be against that. Yep, I mean, they've got horses. I would have also liked them to have a longmar. It would have made them much more useful, but yeah, War Horse is perfectly fine. It's just a generic uh, buffer type character, but it's also very good at doing damage. Definitely one that you're going to be running really soon. These are available from your basic barracks, by the way, all the way at tier 3, so it's not going to be too long until you can be recruiting them with Zhao Ming and Miao Miao. The next thing is the Celestial Lion. It's a very pretty boy with a very smug look, as you can tell. But yes, this is a flying monster, which is uh, pretty much the Cafean version of the Manticore, essentially. I mean, that's what it was explained as in lore, and... Yeah, big monster, flies super fast, uh, which is 85 speed. It's also fast on the floor. It causes terror. It's got a really cool effect there, so you can actually knock out the enemy leadership and also they're immune to psychology in an area which is really really good as an effect. I've been able to use these quite a lot and I tell you what they're very good at killing off characters too. I was pleasantly surprised by that. The monster is just very interesting looking. I was honestly expecting this to be held back for the Kingdoms of Inn though, but for Cafe, I think it's also in Chinese mythology. I'm not 100% too sure. So this is a Cafean unit, and that means that it does have harmony bonuses. This is a Yong unit. Overall, big fan. I was pleasantly surprised. The additions have been really good for what they've been. I wasn't really expecting something so regal looking. It looks like if this was a miniature, which it likely is for Grand Cafe when that eventually happens for Wham of the Old World, it will be an absolutely pain to paint though. Which, uh, that's a problem for future Nathan. Uh, anyways, this is a tier 3 unit once again. It's found on the same line as the Astromancers and the Jet Lions and so on, which means that it won't take too long to pick up if you want one. Again, super cool, to be honest. Like, it is an interesting monster. I'm just really surprised, because obviously we don't know much about Grand Cafe, so when it gets implemented through the form of DLC, it's always a big shock. The next single entity monster is the Great Moonbird. So this is pretty much a phoenix. That's probably the best way to explain it. It's a yin unit. It's very fast, causes terror. It's got very high fire resistance and pretty much acts very much like a phoenix. So that's why I was kind of expecting a vermilion birds instead. But that's probably something that we'll likely see with Li Dao and the Monkey King in the future. It's also got access to a Vortex ability, which spawns right below the bird. This will make the bird uh, stationary for a while, and it's something that you'll want to aim 
properly. Which means if you want to get the best effect out of the Vortex, you'll need to make sure that the bird flies over and stops directly over the enemy. It then takes around one or two seconds to get it up and running, but it does decent amount of damage. It is very important to note because if you have it flying and then click on it, it will actually fly for a little bit more before it stops. It's the momentum of this creature. As you may have noticed, it's got, well, 120 speed. I think this is one of the fastest creatures in the game, and it is horrendously quick. I was really pleasantly surprised. It's got fire and magical damage, so damage-wise it's pretty good, and it's very good for taking out, say, war machines or strangling units, anything that is susceptible to fire, but yeah, the speed is the big thing. It just literally zooms across really, really quickly, you can tell on screen right now, where it turns around and just really flies super, super fast. It's going to be one of those ones that you're going to be using to zoom across the battlefield. The last single entity is Satang the Watcher. This is a legendary hero which is available to all Cathayan factions and is a very powerful range single entity monster. This character, as I've been told by Creative Assembly, is recruitable from rank 12, although I will point out that I had it pop up at rank 13. It does tremendous amounts of damage as a range monster, is pretty decent in melee, does a very good um, seismic slam. It's pretty much the leap that they described. It doesn't really teleport them across the battlefield as kind of expected from their blog post. I will say that it's likely we're going to get a melee version as obviously you guys have noticed by now that the map that was released two years ago actually has another construct. But this one is pretty good at what it does and it's also a support hero. It boosts up the capabilities of a bunch of your troopers. This will all be explained fully in a how to unlock video as everything will be there including all the different prerequisites that you need. It's there to mostly buff up your ranged troopers or your single entity monsters, so if you like an army which is focused very heavily on range, it's definitely going to be one for you, especially with Grand Cafe, which they do have a fair amount of really good range, a lot of crossbows, and obviously for the monsters too, which can drastically reduce their upkeep by around 15% for the Jet Lions, the Jade Lions, the Celestial Lion, and also the uh, Terracotta Sentinel. It's obviously not the best legendary hero that is going to be included in Shadows of Change, mostly because that uh, goes to the Blue Scribes, who are really, really strong. But it's definitely a really good one, and it's going to give you a lot more reason to have big monsters out in the field. So these are the additions coming to Grand Cafe, so I'm going to be showcasing them off in a battle versus the Demons of Chaos, because Daniel should get some attention at least once a year. And yeah, I'm trying to bring in all the new stuff that's been added in, alongside, you know, some basic troopers here and there, and a dragon-blooded Shugengen. When it comes to Grand Cafe and the original additions to Shadows of Change, yeah, they were eating already quite well. You know, you had access to the two lions, you had access to the war drum, and also the Celestial General. Now, what's being added in is filling off some holes that Grand Cafe very much needed. Some flying speed single entity monsters to go alongside your Jade Longmar Riders, your Gate Master to be able to actually defend your Spellcaster Lords, or even just add in an extra bit of punch here and there, as obviously hero characters tend to be better than certain groups of infantry, depending on the infantry unit, of course, as some can actually quite destroy a single entity unit. And then finally, Seitang bringing in a much-needed legendary hero for the character. It was actually quite surprising originally that a legendary hero was just not implemented for them prior, mostly because, well, yeah, you know, it's a big character. You expect Games Workshop to be fluffing them out as much as possible to hype them out for the eventual release of an army book. And as we know, now, uh, Games Workshop do have a lot more to say when it comes to Total War than most people thought originally. With that being said, the flying entity monsters are quite good. I don't really like the fact that the Great Moonbird kind of still has that momentum going when you click the spell. So you have to make sure that it stops properly or else that attack is really wasted. And considering that the Moonbird then has to stop and cast it and keep channeling it, it can be a big target. So yeah, you have to keep an eye for that. The Lion itself is perfectly fine. You can just set it and forget it and just kill off a character. All good additions. The Gate Master Hero is probably the biggest thing, though. I know that might sound really boring, but finally having a Gate Master to be able to actually do some damage and uh, have the support that a lot of armies actually do need in some cases is quite useful. I have no doubt that we were going to get it eventually, but the fact is it should have always been here because there's not going to be a DLC focused around the Great Bastion. So, 
Yeah. So with all that being said, I actually quite like the additions. If you pair it up with everything else, you've got a pretty good force. Yeah, fairly happy. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below to start a bit of a discussion. There's a lot more to come today. I'll also be streaming live over on Twitch, on twitch.tv slash the great book of grudges if you want to pop by. And yeah, I'll see you all again very, very soon. I will succeed. Cathay prevails! Withdraw! 